All right. Now Dennis here. It's been uh, oh, it's been quite a week on the homestead here. So I'm gonna go take a look at my bees because I don't know something about checking on the hives just kind of it's kind of relaxing. I don't know. Just want to peek inside this hive. Let's take a look around the entrance. So what I'm calling blackberry. It's my overwintered hive. It's warm out today, and um, we're just uh, just going crazy today. I don't know if you can see how fast they're flying in and out of here, but. This has all the signs of a pretty good nectar flow right now. So I'm real interested to see what happened up here in that box I put on with all my uh, foundationless frames. So uh, I'm going to take a peek inside there and see what they're doing. If they're real busy, we'll just leave them alone. But i um, a little bit curious about what's going on in the bottom box. Wondering if I can uh, remove that deep yet, but... Like I said, if they're super busy in there, I think we're just going to let them be. Let's take a look. And if you want to see why I call this one Blackberry. The whole stand of Blackberry, wild Blackberry bushes in here. I'm actually pretty surprised. This is the um, this is the super I put on, but uh, they haven't done anything up here yet. I thought for sure the way they were getting full of honey down below that they would be drawing comb up here, no problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a if if. Um, one of the things we don't want to see is we don't want to see it get too full of honey down below because then the queen doesn't have any place to lay eggs. This guy, these things are the bane of my existence. These are screwing up my garden right now. This is a winter moth larvae. These caterpillars, the winter moths are an invasive species. They just destroy the trees around here. Oh man. Not super confident yet, so I'm still gonna wear my gloves after all, even though I'm in shorts today. So I can tell already that, um, just, just from the weight of this, oh, this is like full of honey, which could be a bad thing. So, if you want to take a quick look, one of the things we can do. Oh man! Oh. Good thing this is a medium. Uh, yeah, so I see some wonky comb and stuff up in there. I have to take a closer look at this one. Oh boy, it's heavy. You know, people talk about how amazing it is that bees can make such perfect honeycomb. And sometimes I look at them like they're crazy because, uh, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some pretty wonky looking honeycomb cells in there. Some of this is, they'll start in, in two different places at once. They'll start over here and over here. You can even see they, they had some larger sized comb here and then some smaller. And then they meet in the middle and you get these like misshapen cells here. But even so, I mean look, you know, this isn't perfect.
So here's a good candidate, I think, to, to put in the top one here. At least for now, get out of the way. So while we're talking about comb, by the way, too, um, um, there's a couple different schools of thought about, about how they make the honeycomb. Or the brood comb. Um, there's a couple different schools of thought on it. And one is that the bees uh, purposely make the six-sided cells. Yeah, see, look at all this honey that they're, they're storing in here. But there's like pollen in here, too, which is weird. Seems weird to me. Um, but they purposely make the, the six-sided uh, cells. But then the other thought is that they actually just make circles, and the surface tension of the wax, the warm wax, is it's still soft. It actually pulls it into hexagonal shapes. So, um, and um, one of the reason, reasons people think that, you know, that's what's happening is that you take some, some bubbles, if you're you know, if you, if you just blow some, uh, if you're blowing bubbles, if you get that many around next to each other, they'll naturally form like a hexagonal pattern. So, the laws of nature are kind of helping the, the bees out when it comes to uh, this hexagonal honeycomb shape. Why'd you do that, bees? You're just going to make me break it, aren't you? I don't like fixing comb anymore. I'm kind of tired of that part of the uh, foundation, this beekeeping. But you know what? Beekeepers that run foundation, they have wonky comb too. Not so bad, maybe they'll fix this. It's kind of nice that this is uh, some old comb that it's attached to that I can kind of, that'll stay in place, I can just kind of push it into the frame. Alright, that's a candidate to go on the end here. Hmm, interesting. Still a bunch of uh, drone brood up here. Recent drone brood too. Oh, that's interesting now. Oh, it looks like they drew this out, and there's a uh, worker brood up in this 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 frame. That's cool. I didn't know that they would. Uh, kind of expecting this to all be honey up here, but not so. A lot more drones. That's okay. Got a good pattern. More worker. Worker brood. Both sides. Capped. Oh, this is beautiful. This looks like a... They just drew this out, too. This is like a, an empty frame that I had in there. And look at Look at this beautiful comb. Look. Look at this. No foundation here. And they drew it up beautifully. Do I have drone frames in here? Yeah, sure. But but that's okay. And, you know, I think it's fascinating that um, You don't need, you know, you don't need to tell them, obviously, but it's, you know, it looks like they're going for a pattern of, oh, here's the, here's the honey and some wonky dro drone comb. Oh, that's a beautiful honey frame. 
Look at that. Some some uh, some brood down here in the bottom. I might actually cut out this brood here. What's fascinating also is that well, maybe because they're starting to cap it actually, but this these cells they look like uh, much smaller cells than I'd expect for for honeycomb. This is a great frame to put up top here because it's nice and straight. And it'll get them started up in this third box. Wow, yeah, look at this. Some beautiful, beautiful honey. Nothing but honey in this one. This one's definitely going to go up top. Maybe I'll just do those two frames. Oh yeah, look at this. Yeah, this is this is great. So yeah, maybe we'll start with the two. Um, and I'll put two empty frames down in here. This is one of the trickiest things, is getting these frames back in here, especially when there's a lot of bees on them. And um, you just got to go slow. You got to put them in next to each other and see how there's still a gap. You just got to slowly push them together, so slow. Because these, you don't want to crush them, especially if the, the queen's in there in the, between the frames somewhere. So you just, uh, you know, you just put them in gently and just slowly push them together. One trick is to kind of take your hive tool and just use it as leverage, go like this. Push the frames because they're going to be all gooey with, with propolis all along the rails and everything. So This is the stuff that takes the longest because you, you got to be careful and, and go slow. That's why I spent an hour out here and all I did was just open it up and take a look. Alright, so I, I cut this little piece of uh, comb off. There's a lot of drone brood in here. And um, it looks like it's actually at least been one cycle. I got one trying to sting my glove here. Um, one cycle of brood through s some of these cells, and uh, the rest on that frame was just like. There's a bee trying to sting my camera. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to get any of the, um, the, the brood comb out of that frame because um, it's, uh, they're starting to cap it and it looks like really great honey. And uh, when I go to process it, I just don't want to deal with, with, with um, you know, brood and brood comb. And um, this is just, these are just drones, so I, I, we don't care about them. So, um, so yeah. All right, so because this, um, because they're getting so strong, this is such a strong hive, um, I just wanted to take a peek down here in the lower boxes. Let me see if we do that real quick. Well, take a look. It looks like they might be preparing to swarm, actually. So um, yeah, there's some there's some queen cups down here, and uh, I gotta think about what I want to do with this hive because um, looks like they are building up to the point where they might be thinking about swarming soon. Um, a bad thing to do would be to remove these queen cups because if a queen uh, if the queen has already left. The original queen, then they'll uh, they'll need these to, for the uh, replacement queen. So that would be a bad thing to do. So uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave these queen cups here, and um, I'll tell you what my plan will be after I think about it for a while. Because there's a couple different methods that beekeepers use to keep their hives from uh, from swarming or to split their hives. 
and um, I'm just going to think about what method I want to use. My philosophy this year also is to just let them be. Uh, no pun intended, but um, you know, limited interventions only when I need to. So, so I um, move some frames around in the top here, and uh, I'm going to put this box here on the top now. But I'm not going to go rearranging their brood nest down below. I'm just going to make sure that they have room up top, place to store the honey. They're not honey bound, so that's good. They're very strong. We've got brood in all three of the lower brood boxes. I'm spacing these uh, frames out at the top here. And if you can, uh, if you count these, there's only nine. This is a ten-frame box. And I'm spacing them out because I'm expecting them to use these for honey, and they'll just uh, they'll just draw the frames deeper when they have the space and when they're storing honey in it. So a little bit more efficient saves them some work on drawing an extra frame of wax, and a little bit easier to extract the honey too.